Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're taking a look at the fried liver and this time we're looking at a defense against it with the Polario defense. Now this is one I've gone over before and this one we're going to be, be seeing a splendid attack. Here we go. We start with e4, e5, knight of 3 attacks the pawn, knight c6 defends the pawn, bishop c4, we get our beloved Italian, knight f6, the two knights defense, and here white goes for it with knight to g5, trying to set up the fried liver attack. Now here, black really has only one good move to defend the f7 pawn, and that's going to be pawn to d5. Here white has nothing better, pawn takes on d5, and here, do not play knight takes on d5, as this is, this is going to allow the fried liver attack here. Um, white can go ahead and play, knight takes on f7, king takes on f7, queen f3 check, and white's having a grand old time just attacking this king in the center. Even though they have only sacked for one piece uh, for a pawn, well, they get plenty of compensation here, and computers are already giving this as a winning position here for white. Pretty amazing, because computers are such good calculators. Alright, back to the game. Here we're going to go ahead and play Pelorio's defense. What is that? Here we're going we're gonna to play knight to a5, attacking the bishop. And here, white goes ahead and plays pawn to d3. Now, this is an old version of the attacking game. Here, a lot of modern players will play the bishop to b5 check, which does seem to have a very good um, attacking chances here for white, and it's definitely the best way to move forward here. But this was back in the olden times, so they went ahead and played pawn to d3. The idea being is if you take on c4 here, well, pawn just takes back, and, well, you have the extra pawn here in the center, and white's just very happy. Of course, we're not going to make life too easy for them. After d3, let's go ahead and kick back this knight real quick. Here we go. Pawn to h6. Here the knight has nowhere good to go. It has to go back to f3, the starting position. Uh, for those that are new here, you might fall for one of the traps here, which is knight to e4. All right, it's black to move and win. What do you play here? All right, here for the nice little trick. Here we see that the pawn is overloaded, trying to defend two pieces at one time. So, simple chess. We're going to go ahead and play knight takes on e4 first. Now, it does matter because if you play knight takes on c4 here, white has the enter Mazoa or the in-between move of knight takes on f6 check. Queen takes, pawn takes, and white arrives at an extra pawn. So, do it in the correct move over here. And after they play knight to e4, you play knight takes on e4 first. Pawn takes, and then knight takes on c4. Although white does have some chances here with some of the pawns, eh, it's just not enough here, and black is going to be in a better position. All right, back to the game. Here white plays a standard move of knight to f3, coming back to attack the e5 pawn. Here black went ahead and played pawn to e4. Again, a, uh, a very standard move in this position. Here, of course, black is hoping that white will go ahead and play pawn takes on e4, and, well, knight takes on c4 is going to snack an extra pawn. Now, I did do a video on this one called the crazy pawn attack, and here this was done by Bronstein as white, and he just played queen to d4, saying, you know what, it's okay that I went ahead and lost this. I'm going to go ahead and use these extra pawns to attack. And he ended up winning a very nice game with the pawns go marching down the board. Well, back to the game. Here, after e4 got played, White went ahead and played another very standard move here, queen to e2. We're going to go ahead and pin it and win it. And here, well, this actually loses the advantage here for white because, well, they need to get their development going. Yes, grabbing extra material is always good, but once you have the extra money or the extra material, get your pieces out as soon as possible and go ahead and get your king to safety and castle. Remember, your king is the most important piece here. Well, let's go ahead and punish him. What do you play here? Knight takes on c4. Don't lose any tempos. This knight was marooned over here. Trading off the knight for the bishop is typically a good idea here as well. Although we're giving up a piece or trading off when you should, uh, whenever the rule is don't make trades, here we're getting some good things for it. Well, nothing better. Let's take back. What'd you get for this? For one thing, you went ahead and won the bishop pair, which means white does not have both of these guys, but you do. The other good thing about this is the pawn structure. When you're looking down this, you're saying, what do you mean? Um, white has an extra pawn, but, you know, it's an extra pawn, even though the pawns are a little bit messed up here. It, I'm not talking about this pawn structure as much, but this pawn structure right here. Now we have a majority over on the king side. See, we have one, two, three, four against one, two, three. These guys over here, yes, white does have the queen side majority, but here you're going to see black build up a very strong attack. And one of the reasons why is because, well, they weren't able to trade off for this pawn. They were able to keep the majority over here. All right, let's see how he does it. Bishop c5. Let's go ahead and keep developing. And of course, we're going to try and castle as soon as possible. Bishop d6 is, is another one of my recommendations that I like to, to play here. Castles. And here we go. Castles over here. Now the knight must move. Uh, for those who didn't notice, we could not take the knight over here because there was a pin. But now that the king has castled, well, now we're seeing that the knight must move away. 
And here, well, a logical move. The knight goes back to d2 here. Yeah, there was really no other good move for this knight to move to. h4, a knight on the rim is grim, is something you should remember. Uh, knight to g5, pawn takes, knight to e5. Definitely behind enemy lines here, and uh, maybe the knight would be okay. I think the knight's getting trapped over there, to be honest. Knight to d4, bishop over here, and the knight to d2. Again, logical, uh, putting pressure on the e4 pawn. But here, if you look at this position, you can already sense that black is in, in uh, good standards. How do we know that? Very simple. Count the pieces of which ones are active and which ones are heading over to the king side. Here, if you do a little count, we'll see. We have one, two, three pieces and a very strong pawn here on e4. And uh, you're going to see that the queen's going to jump in real fast and also this rook can jump in real fast. Notice, though, white's queen side, well, it's pretty much all asleep here. I would say the only two active defenders here is the rook and the queen. Uh, poor Otis here is going to be failing for a very strong attack against Oscar. All right, here we go. Let's develop with the threat. What's the next piece you want to move? It's going to be the bishop. Remember, try to bring out your miners first, the knights and the bishops. So here we go. Bishop g4 developing with the threat attacking the queen. And the queen looks a little embarrassed here about where to move to. I mean, well, there's only one safe square here, at least that I can see that the queen can move to. Notice that the pawn can't be moved forward because of the bishop over here. All right, the queen jumps back to e1 over here. And here we go, queen to d7, connecting the rooks. This is one of the final steps before you start your middle game. It's to go ahead and move your queen up, and the rooks get connected. Now the rooks can jump into the game. But now you see one, two, three, four pieces ready to attack on the king side. And, well, poor Otis, uh, Otis's king over here only has one defender, the rook. Uh, maybe you can make arguments for these guys, but they're just too far away. All right, white's in a hurry here. White played knight to b3, which makes sense because, well, let's move the knight away. Let's make a threat attacking the bishop and open up this bishop over here. Here, I'm sure white was feeling a little bit better that they're going to get some good tempos or free moves by attacking here. Unfortunately for them, they're playing a master attacker here, and it is now Oscar to move and, well, get into a winning position. All right, black to move. What do you play here to start a very strong attack? It is now negative four as far as computers saying. All right, hopefully you push pause, tried to figure it out. I mean, if you're looking at this position as a strong player, you know that something's up. Again, we counted how many pieces we have ready to attack, and poor Otis's king doesn't have any defenders over here. Typically, when they don't have a knight on f3, you should be looking for ideas. And this f3 square is definitely where it's at. And here he goes ahead and plays, da da da, -da bishop to f3. Uh, is this just a free piece here? It's free if you're not calculating. Here, if knight takes on c5, well, it's pretty much game over here. The light squares are weak because they lost their light square bishop. Queen to g4, threatening queen takes g2, checkmate. Pawn g3, only move queen h3, and here we're going to get the lollipop checkmate. Game over. Okay, so we can't take that way. Can we go ahead and take on f3 here? You're more than welcome to. We're going to get the same idea. Pawn takes on f3 with the very strong idea of queen to g4 check and mate on g2. And again, there's just no good way to defend this. The pieces are just not well placed. Um, queen g4 check is being threatened. If you try to play something like, let's say, king to h1, here we have too many pieces over here ready to attack. Queen h3 check, threatening checkmate. Rook g1 only move. And here, bishop to d6, checkmate on this square right here is just game over. Only move to play is rook to g3. Bishop can take on g3. Pawn is forced to take back, and, uh, well, there's, there's a, uh, just a checkmate here on g2. I mean, yes, I guess you can go ahead and play something like queen to g1, but, um, again, it's just forced checkmate and many moves over here. All right, back to the game. Let's go back to bishop to f3. I'm sure white was pretty much sweating at this point, noticing, well, my king is pretty weak over here. Only one way to try and stop this, bishop to f4, the idea being is if queen to g4 gets played, well, I can bring my bishop back to g3. All right, black to move. Let's keep this attack going. What do you play? This is all done by calculation. We go ahead and play queen to g4 anyways. We're going to force this bishop back to g3. Seems like a weird thing to do, but again, that's why calculation is so important. The ability to think ahead concretely as possible. If you make one little mistake here, you can get to a losing position really fast. Also, this bishop's a little taboo right now. You really still can't take it because after pawn takes, the queen to h3 lollipop checkmate is still going to be there. All right, knight to h5, a nice idea. What's black up to over here? We're going to see in, uh, in very shortly. All right. White couldn't figure out anything better. So, well, free money's free money. Knight takes on c5. And now it's pretty much game over. Where was that knight heading to? Remember, after every move, ask yourself, what is my opponent's threat? Here, knight to f4 got played. And white probably did see this move, but they were probably thinking to themselves, well, even though uh, they're threatening to win on g2 here, g2 is not a checkmate. 
there is a checkmate scheme here. And here, well, white goes ahead and says, go ahead and do it because they miss it. And they played knight takes on e4. Now we have a beautiful sacrifice here. It's black to move and checkmate in three. All right. I recommend that you push pause here. Black to move. What do you play? All right. Hopefully you saw it. Here we get to play the amazing queen to h3. And it's game over. Notice that we're threatening queen takes on g2 for checkmate. And, uh, well, the knight's guarding on, on g2 too. So it doesn't help to take the bishop because checkmate still happens. Okay, uh, we got to ask ourselves, why can't you just take the queen? Here we get a very nice knight and bishop checkmate with pawn takes, knight takes for the checkmate. And this is just a very beautiful position that will most likely be forced. At least if they don't want to get a deadly kiss checkmate with the queen checkmating on g2. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, this was in the plurial defense, which is after they go ahead and play. Oops, let me go ahead and put that back real quick. Awesome. Whenever, whenever they go ahead and play... The uh, move of d5, e takes on d5, do not take back. We're going to go ahead and play knight to a5 here, attacking the bishop. And, well, after this, bishop to b5 check is, is more normal, but pawn to d3 still gets played to this day. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>